What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Today I have Glendronic Cast Strength Batch 4. I bought these a while back, I bought two of them. And the reason I bought two of them is because my friend bought the other two and they're the last four at Sierra Springs. Uh, my buddy Marco was kind enough to bring them back for us. Uh, Sierra Springs is awesome. I brag about these guys all the time. They're located in Alberta. I'm lucky enough to have a friend that travels there quite often. Um, Sim is the guy that I deal with and honestly, really honest, truly, truly nice guy. So I highly recommend you check them out. Um, this one cost me, I wanna say around a hundred dollars. Can't remember exactly, but that's pretty much the going rate everywhere. Actually, the batch four would probably cost more than a hundred dollars Canadian anywhere else in the world, I would think. Um, and that's why I always brag about how Alberta has the best, best prices uh, for scotch in the world, okay? The Glendronic Batch 4, so there's up to Batch 6 now. I do believe they're going to continue with the series. And I know Scotch 4 Dummies, who I'll be doing a live review with in August, um, did the Batch 3. They posted I think yesterday or something, so you guys should check that out after you check out mine. Um, this one is made with Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry casks. But um, the Pedro Jimenez is a bit younger. It's from 2002. And the Oloroso is from 1996, I believe. So this is bottled in 2015, which makes uh, it a combination of 13 and 16 year old whiskey. Um, the Oloroso is the older part of the mix, like I said. Uh, so, 13 and what did I say, 18 year old? I'm wrong about that, it's like 19. Or, it's either 2006 or it could be actually, I'm not 100% sure, uh, sorry, not 2006. It's definitely 2002 and I think the other one is 1998 now that I think about it. That would make more sense, yeah, 1998. Um, so, older whiskey. Now, I've had, like, as you can tell, I've had some time with this bottle, and I've shared it with some friends, and I will say, this far, I've expected a little bit more. All right, I've heard nothing but good things about this. Um, on Whiskey Fun, uh, Surge gives this a 90 or a 91. So, it is really good. I do really, really enjoy it. I just expected a lot more being that it's Glendro excuse me, Glendronic, that it's a mix of Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso. And I find it comes in a little bit thin, despite the fact that it's uncho filtered and natural color, okay? The color is a little bit lighter, which would suggest that there are some second fill barrels in this, okay, maybe uh, even third fill, okay? They're definitely refill barrels. If those were first fill barrels, this thing would be dark. It would be dark, dark mahogany color, all right? Especially when you're talking about Glendronic. Uh, I think the 12-year-old the might be darker than that, maybe a little bit, but it's still definitely darker. Um, I wanna give quick shout outs. This Saturday, I will be jumping in a group live review with Malted in Montreal. I believe the Scotch Test Dummies are gonna be there. And I wanna say Whiskey Whistle Mark. Um, or no, Bubba and the Beard, sorry. Bubba and the Beard. So the four of us will be all together and I think it's gonna be both Scott and Bart and it's gonna be Bubba and the Beard. So it's actually gonna be six of us when you include Swami and myself. Um, that should be pretty cool. It's gonna be on at 10 o'clock Eastern time this Saturday night, okay? So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be on Swami's channel, so Malted in Montreal. The other two shout outs I have to give, I will be collaborating with Basement Drammer Mel in the next little while. He's just starting his YouTube channel now. He's doing 
a few reviews every once in a while. Check him out, super cool guy, super nice guy. He supports all the YouTube channels. If, if you watch his channel, you'll see he has t-shirts from some guys, he's got my hat, he's got a bunch of stuff from other reviewers. So check him out, Basement Drammer Mel. And the other one I wanted to give a quick shout out to, also just starting out, is uh, Scotch and Pipes. I don't know him very well. I just uh, checked out his channel, it seems pretty cool. So if you guys wanna give him a look, Scotch and Pipes on YouTube. All right, <clears throat> Glendronic batch for cast strength. Nose is very nice. Get like a Nutella, like hazelnuts and chocolate, if you don't know what Nutella is. I find that Pedro Jimenez um, and I always butcher that name, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced differently, but um, Pedro Jimenez, Sherry is always a little nutty, okay? Chocolate, like I said. There are some fruits in this one, like Strawberries, maybe strawberry jam. Okay, you don't, you can't pick up that it's, this one's 54.7% and you do not get that on the nose at all. And I've tried this with water and without and I actually prefer it without. Okay, on the palate. Very little alcohol bite, which shows its age. Um, it's sweet, it's not overly sweet. It's not as thick as you um, would assume from a Glendronic expression, all right? So, I like it a lot, but it's not as viscous as I was expecting. Mid palette and finish are the best parts of this. Upon entry, you don't get all the sweetness that you would expect, but then the mid palette really comes through with the sweetness and the finish is awesome. It's like all those coffee notes, uh, sweet, maybe, I don't add sugar to my espresso, but back in the day when my grandmother used to make my espresso for me, whenever I went over to visit her, she would pre-put the sugar and that's kind of what I'm getting here. There's a, and I wanna say it's a brininess, but it doesn't make sense because it's not something you commonly find with Glendronic um, in general, but definitely a brininess to this one. I'm not sure why. Not so much on the palate, but more on the nose. Very nice stuff. Like I said, um, my expectations for this were that it was going to be an A++++. It fell short. Um, not sure why. I think it's mostly because of it being relatively thin. And the other thing is there's not as much sweetness as you would come to expect from a Glendronic. So for those two reasons, it's a very nice whiskey. It's still an A for me, and I would definitely buy this again. If I had the opportunity, I'd buy probably another two of them, just because it's difficult to find a cast strength expression, especially a Glendronic for around $100. So if I get the opportunity, I'll probably buy another one, if not another two. But, like I said, I was expecting it to be an A+, and it's more of, a high A for
for me like an 85 on the dot okay um, maybe even closer to like an, no sorry I would say it's probably closer to like an 87 all right 87 which is a very good mark A's for me go all the way up to 89 I've had better A's than this but I've had a lot worse A's obviously it goes as low as 84 so like I said 87 I was confused with my numbers there for a second I should have definitely wrote that down 87 uh, that's an A next up and this is what I think you guys will be excited for I got McCann 17 year old and I got four roll single barrel which will definitely pique the interest of all the bourbon watchers but before I do those two, this coming Thursday, if all goes well, I should be doing an interview with Beth Havers, who's the amb ambassador of Glenn Fittick. Super cool chick. I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff already, stuff that she's sent me, and now we're gonna get to finally sit down and have a conversation about one of the expressions that she had a hand in making by choosing a cask which is the Project XX, and then the Glenfiddich IPA. So I've tasted them, I've reviewed them already, but we're gonna talk in detail about them and about other things that Glendronic is going to be releasing in the next little while, and I'm sure she'll have some other secrets she can share with you guys. Like I said, that's an A87 if I had to give it a number, maybe even a little higher. I haven't gone, like, the way I do it is I try to average out my tasting. So if I have a full bottle of something, I'll do three tastings at least, and then I'll average out those three marks and give it a final mark. The highest it's ever gone was about an 88. I think I'm a little harsher on it than other people. When I've offered it to other people, they've all seemed to really like it. I'm just a little harsher, I guess, because I expected so much. It's gotten such great reviews from other people that I thought it was going to be incredible and it didn't blow my mind so and maybe not fair to this I've been comparing it to some really good Cavalon that I've been having recently but the price difference is substantial so that's really good stuff and it's a lot easier on the wallet than the Cavalons all right so check that out subscribe if you haven't already I have Facebook Instagram Twitter and I also have Patreon. Every dollar helps to support this stuff so I can tell you guys what I like and what I don't. I don't buy a lot of what I don't like, but every once in a while I will stumble upon something that has had a ton of really good reviews and not like it so much. So whenever that happens, I'll definitely share that with you. Usually when I go to buy, I do a lot of research first and I buy things that I like. So if you notice that I have a lot of positive things to say, it's because I truly stick to buying things that I'm gonna appreciate for a long period of time instead of having bottles sit on my shelf just because I've reviewed them and I don't like them and they just end up sitting there. That's about it. Cheers, guys.